so for questions, um, let me ask uh, David Weiner and Norbert Pardee this, each the same question. Um, this is probably unanswerable, but, but summarizes many people's questions, which is, when do you think a vaccine would be available to the public? So first, David, if you're there, what, what do you think the timing is on rolling out the DNA vaccine in a way that can reach a lot of people? Right, so this is about um, 10 weeks since the CEPI funding. Um, and this vaccine now is moving forward and one from uh, Moderna moved forward just over um, 10 days ago. And so um, what we're seeing, what we're going to learn in the next uh, few months is the safety and tolerability. And, and yes, a licensable, va a licensable vaccine will be longer. However, having a these tools, if should they make it through the first phase into FC trials, are at that point um, could possibly be, you know, involved in as tools for risk mitigation and the populations that they're tested in, um, chosen judiciously, could be very valuable should we get early signals on them working. And then at that point, you really are not going to be thinking about these the same way we think about a traditional uh, pneumococcal vaccine where they go through or the rotavirus vaccine, these very large um, EPSI trial. This is a uh, pandemic type of situation, and I believe what you'll see is deployment as they get go through the final stages towards licensure, a, a more of an emergency situation. So those tools still will take some time, but they should be a lot faster than the traditional vaccine development. You don't want to specify any particular uh, duration or length of time till it's available in, in large amounts? Well, I think um, to go back, uh, you know, if you deploy this targeting through, well, I guess I can say this. the it will certainly be um, doses in the millions of levels over the next um, – several groups have announced that over this year. In fact, one company announced they'll have a billion doses um, towards the end of this year in about a year's time. So you will see that. But, again, if you focus on the groups that are most at risk, like healthcare workers, and then you do your studies specifically and deploy – through people at highest risk and risk of transmitting, we will start to see a, a very large effect long before we have everyone in the population vaccinated. So I think this is going to be developed in a quite a un I would think there's consideration to develop this quite a unique way. And there was a, an article on this in New England Journal of Medicine two days ago from SEPI describing the difference between the way we focus on trials in these pandemic outbreaks versus the traditional vaccine development paradigm. Okay, thank you very much. So let me ask uh, Norbert Pardee the same question. Um, how soon do you think uh, your vaccine or mRNA vaccines can be implemented? And uh, what, what would you, what do you feel comfortable saying to us? To answer, uh, I think uh, so Moderna has started um, uh, a small trial a couple of days ago with the messenger RNA vaccine. Actually, I'm testing that vaccine as well. Uh, and um, and they, what they say that if everything goes well, uh, it will still take at least a year uh, from now uh, to have a to have a vaccine. And uh, yeah, so but again, I think no one really knows the answer for this. So we'll yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And. So why don't we go to one last question, uh, again, taken from the, the list from the audience, um, for Henry Lee. Um, might you use interferons to treat SARS-CoV-2, or is that going to be futile based on, on what we know about corona coronaviruses? Again, could we use deliberately added interferons to treat SARS-CoV-2? Yeah. So basically, there's uh, some uh, preliminary uh, research in the cellular model. So if you treat the viral E6 cell with 1,000 unit of interferon uh, per meal, I mean, so you can largely suppress the viral production from a cell. 
But for clinical treatment, uh, there's uh, no data yet, or I didn't see any trial to use interferon to treat. So what we learned from Stanley's study, the interferon problem can be uh, like a time uh, dependent. So in the early stage of uh, the infection, in the mouse model of a SARS coronavirus, if you treat early, the outcome can be improved. Uh, the mouse can be very happy and uh, the, largely suppress the infection. But if you treat the mice in the very late stage, I mean, when the mouse have a severe pneumonia, the interferon treatment can enhance the severity or enhance the pathology. So that's kind of a course we, we learned from uh, the mouse model, yeah. Great, well, thank you very much, Henry. So uh, we, we have many, many questions we haven't been able to get to. Um, again, I would invite audience members to write directly to the speakers uh, with your questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to them. Thank you all very much for attending. Uh, the interest level was really high in this. At, we were over 2,000 people for some of our for some of the lectures. So obviously there's a huge interest. We'll probably do uh, another um, uh, symposium like this relatively soon. There are huge numbers of people doing really interesting work at Penn, and we could have 10 symposiums and not run out of the uh, exciting research going on here. So thank you all very much for attending, and we hope you'll be interested in our next one.